Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is zaid 6 mtsv I am a sentient van VTuber. On this video, I'm going to share with you guys my build for a Le Mans money grind. As you can see here, I've got a Subaru BRZ which has been engine swapped from a Suzuki Group 3 VGT race car. The engine gives an advantage to the BRZ as it's fuel efficient and also it's quite powerful. So let's go on with the bit. So first things first is you need a Subaru BRZ 2015. You can swap this car's engine for the Suzuki VGT engine. For the car's body kit, it's actually up to your preference. If you want to install a custom design or if you want to make your own design, it's up to you. As long as you install the front bumper and the rear wing, you're good to go. Once you've bought the car, you need to install a white body kit. If you don't want to install the body kit, it is okay. But for me, I recommend to get the body kit because it's going to add a bit more stability to the car. Next is the engine swap itself. So if you can see here, the price of the engine is a bit on the high side. But I assure you, it is going to be worth it. Next, we're going to see the actual parts that we need to buy in the tuning shop. In the sports tab, I'm only going to buy a stage 1 weight reduction. And that is the only weight reduction that you need for this build. In the club sports tab, get the power restrictor and ballast. In the semi-racing tab, the fully customizable computer has already been included uh, with the engine swap. So the only things that you need are the fully customizable differential and uh, to increase the body rigidity so you can make the car even more stable at high speeds. For the racing tab, you need the racing brake pads and also the brake kit upgrade. So it doesn't matter if you're buying the uh, two brake kits offered in the racing tab, you will need the brake balance controller to adjust your brake balance as necessary because sometimes the car will be a bit unstable during hard braking. Then get the fully customizable suspension, the racing clutch and flywheel, the fully customizable racing transmission and then both the hard and medium racing tires. On the extreme tab, don't forget to buy the rain tires whether you want to get just the intermediate tires or buying both intermediate and heavy wet racing tires. So you can see here that I've bought the carbon ceramic brake kits for my Subaru. For your build, it's up to your preference. And finally, in the ultimate tab, you can see here that there's only one item that can be purchased, which is the carbon prop shaft. If you're not at level 50, however, you can ignore this tab and we'll go straight into the setup. All right, so this is my setup for the 700pp Le Mans race. As you can see here, I'm already using the racing medium tires. And for the suspension setups, I usually set the right height with a bit of brake. You can see here, I've got 100mm at the front and then 110mm at the back. For anti-roll bars, I recommend setting to level 5 or level 6 for both front and rear. For the absorber's damping ratio, which is uh, the compression percentage here, I usually set it to level 30 at uh, the front and rear. So for damping ratio, I just leave it at 45. Then for the spring's natural frequency, which is the spring stiffness, I usually set a bit hard on uh, all of my uh, racing car builds. You can see here that I've set 2.3 Hz at the front and 2.5 Hz at the rear. It is up to you, however, if you want to make the car even, even stiffer or a bit softer. For the camber angle, I set this to 3 degrees at the front and 2 degrees rear. For the toe angle, so for the front, I set this to 0.1 toe out. So you can see here that the slider goes to a bit to the left, while the rear is 0.25 toe in. So you can see the slider is going to the right. For the differential setup, as you can see here, I just left the initial lock to level 10. For acceleration, I set it to level 20. And for deceleration, I usually increase the differential lock for deceleration to 30 or 40 depending on the car's stability during braking. If it's a bit squirrely during braking or during deceleration while cornering, 
I advise to just increase the lock a bit so the car can be a bit more stable. Next, for downforce levels, I set the front downforce to the maximum mount which is 100 points and for the rear, I set it to 210. So there's no change in the ECU. There's no change in the output adjustment. So have a look. This car can rev up to 12,000 RPM which is actually going to come in handy. Next will be the gear ratios. For this build, I've set the top speed to 220 but do not be fooled. The values are actually based on the RPM of the standard engine which goes to I think around 8000 RPM or yeah, something like that. So you can see here the manual adjustment tab. You can pause and uh, take a look and copy the values if you want to. You can see here that the 6th gear actually tops out at 346 km an hour. So for Imperial values, I believe it's around 220 to 225 miles an hour. It is quite speedy. I'm leaving the turbocharger as is because if you can see the performance points there, it's already almost at the limit at 697 pp and then you can see here the brake system the brake pads and the brake balance and then you can see the rest of the parts that are fitted for this car all right we have the racing clutch and flywheel the carbon prop shaft stage one weight reduction body rigidity increase carbon disc brakes racing brake pads and the brake balance controller and then we'll go to the race here we are at the WTC 700 Le Mans race. So I should say that my opponents are set to the hardest difficulty. I believe it's a professional difficulty with two chilies. And then first things first you want to do in this race is to set the fuel mixture to level 4. So you'll get a bit more fuel saving. Even with the reduced power, the car will still out accelerate every opponent in this race. And as you can see here, the car is a bit squirrely at low speeds. But with practice, you can control any car, no matter if it's a bit too oversteery or a bit too understeery or whatever in between. And now you can see the top speed here, it's already reaching 300 kph, even with the reduced power. So just take it a bit easy on the first lap and pace yourself, alright? There's no need to be rushing a lot because you are going to overtake your opponents with just the speed itself. Now towards the end of the lap, end of the first lap, I made a slight mistake and uh, got myself into a spin. But because this car has the power advantage and it's also light, you can actually catch up comfortably. So in the first pit stop, there's already a very heavy downpour and I've elected to switch to use the intermediate tyres while the AI unfortunately stuck with racing slicks. This is where you can increase the gap to the opponents and set yourself for a very comfortable race. So here you can see the tyres have already been changed and I've refueled the car up to its limit and then off we go. In this race, the track actually dries up at lap 5 so I had to pit again and change to dry tyres but the gap is significantly large enough that I can win with more than 5 second gap to the second place and it's actually quite a big gap considering that the AI is actually on its hardest difficulty so here it is my fastest lap 4 minutes 12 seconds with a 33 minute race time and since there were no yellow flags in the race I got an easy clean race bonus with a total of 825,000 credits while driving for a total of 94 kilometers and your standard 4 star roulette ticket. So that is all for my build on this episode. Do try it out and adjust as necessary. Have fun experimenting with all the builds, all the cars that you can get. And also don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm also live on Twitch and TikTok. Do check me out there and I'll see you guys next time with another build. Alright, take care everyone. See ya.